Page 8, Starting Points. This is the first lesson I'm giving in this book. I'll cover everything up to this point in this lesson. If you take a look on page 4, they're introducing you to a keyboard. I think most everybody already knows what a keyboard looks like. That's just a bunch of white and black keys. They are arranged very neatly. In the black keys, you have groups. A group of three, a group of two, and it just alternates back and forth. They give you the letters in the keys in the picture there on page four. Some people put stickies on their keyboard. Some I never used stickies when I was little. It's a personal thing. If you do, remember it's just a crutch, just to get you going. The sooner you can get the stickies off and know what the keys are without having to figure it out or look it up, it's better. So there's some memorizing to do here up front. In music, we use the first seven letters of the alphabet for the note names. So of all these keys on the keyboard, really there's only seven that you got to memorize, and they just keep repeating, because you can see the groups of two and three repeat. Well, these seven letters just keep repeating. That's the first seven letters, A through G. That's what they are. We just have to try and remember which letter is which key. And to do that, we look at the black keys. The black keys tell us what the white keys are. And later, the white keys are going to tell us what the black keys are. That just kind of goes in a circle. That makes no sense. But that's music. What do you expect? I would prefer that we just take these keys a few at a time. Now, you don't try to memorize everything right now. we got time. We'll go over these in the lessons. They're pointing out a few of them there for you. But I'm going to do that a little later in the lesson. On page five, they're introducing you to music notation. <sighs> okay. We use a lot of symbols in music. It tells us how to read the music, how to play the music. It's an idea. It's not exact, but it's an idea of how to play. And I'm going to talk about these over and over and over so you'll get them eventually. The five lines in music, five lines, just the five lines as a group, is called a staff. Then the notes go on the staff in various places. The notes can go on a line. And when we say on a line in music, we mean the line goes through the note. Or the note can be in a space. So it's on a line or in a space. Take your pick. Those are your choices. In the middle of the page, on page 5, they have the clef signs. The treble clef and the bass clef. The treble clef is also known as a G clef because it points out where the note G is on the staff, on the five lines. And the bass clef is known as an F clef because it points out where F is on the staff. If you know where one note is, you can figure out the others just by going up and down the alphabet. Toward the bottom of the page, on page 5, they talk about middle C. Sort of a starting point for us. Middle C is called middle C, and there's only one, because it is in the middle of the grand staff. Hmm. Not in the middle of the keyboard. It's not in the middle of the keyboard. It's close. But it's in the middle of a grand staff. Doesn't help a lot if you don't know what a grand staff is. Okay, let's talk grand staff. Look toward the bottom of page 5, and you see a group of five lines with a treble clef in it. And then under it, there's another group of five lines with a bass clef in it. And they are connected with a vertical line. It goes through both staves, connects them. And there's a curly brace at the beginning. Now, forget the clef signs. Those don't count. We're talking about the staves, the line that connects them, and the curly brace. That is called a grand staff. And it could be three lines, too, but most of the time it's just two lines. Piano or any instrument that needs a whole lot of notes will use a grand staff. Harps, organs, pianos, whatever. Well, middle C is a note right in the middle of it, and they show it there. It's on a line floating. It's not on either staff. It's, it's below the top staff and above the bottom staff. It's right in the middle. And it's called middle C. Just know that note for now. Know what middle C is, because we refer to it quite a bit. Now, at the bottom of the page, they refer to measures and bar lines. We're throwing a lot at you, and I don't expect you to remember all this right now, because we're going to go over it again and again and again. But just briefly, the vertical line in the middle there at the bottom of the page 5, that's called a bar line, or a measure line. Could be called either one. 
depends on what country you're from. I usually call them bar lines because I'm lazy and it's it's a shorter word to say than measure. Then the space in between these vertical lines are called measures or bars. It could be called either one. Measures or bars depends on what country you're from. I usually call them measures. I could say bars. Either way, just know the space in between the vertical lines is a measure or a bar and the vertical line itself is called a measure line or bar line. And while I'm here, I'll go ahead and point out at the end of that line, this is at the bottom of page five, that little bit they showing you. At the end of that, there is a thin and thick bar line that goes down together. That is the symbol for the end of a piece of music. It's where the music ends. It's not always at the end like that. But nevertheless, if you're into writing music or whatever, wherever your piece ends, make sure you use a thin and thick bar line. That's the symbol for it. On page six, to introducing you to time, rhythm, counting. How long do we hold the notes down? We'll work on this a lot as we go through these lessons. Just briefly, there are numbers at the beginning of the grand staff. You see after the clef signs in the middle of the page on page six, that they have a 4-4. Four, four. And it has to be for each staff. Each staff has to have its own set of symbols. As long as you understand how this works, it doesn't matter what the numbers are, and the numbers could be almost anything. Those numbers is called a time signature because it's going to tell you how to count the rhythm. The top number, whatever it is, tells you how many counts or how many beats, how many pulses, if you will, are in a measure or bar. Remember the measure bars is space in between these vertical lines. Okay, it means there's how many counts? If they're showing four four. That means there's going to be four counts in every measure, equal to four counts. So if we count it, we just go one two three four one two three four one two three four. Just count that over and over and over. The bottom number tells us what we're counting, or what what note gets a beat, what note gets a count, and the four represents a quarter note. Now, briefly on the notes, because at the bottom of the page they show you the notes and the different ones. The first one at the bottom of the page is a circle. That's called a whole note. Think of a whole something, a whole pie or a whole something. And the second measure, they got two half notes. You see, if I take a hole and I cut it in half, I get two halves. Okay, so there's two half notes to a whole note. Counting wise, there's two of them. So if you're counting whole notes, half notes go twice as fast. It'll make more sense a little later. And the third measure, they have what's known as a dotted half note and a quarter note. The solid circle with a stem, that's a quarter note. Other countries have different names, minims and crotchets and quavers and semiquavers and so forth. It depends on what country you're from. I'm not accustomed to them. I just, I just sort of know what they are, but I'm using the American names here or the names used in America is not our name. We didn't invent it, somebody else did, but we're using those and I use these whole note, half note, dotted half note, quarter note, and so forth. So the half note is an is empty circle with a stem. The quarter note is a solid circle with a stem. And the dotted half note is simply a half note with a dot behind it. And it, it, it divides. So a whole note divided in two, you get two halves. Take a half note and divide it in two, you get two quarters, two quarter notes. And it could keep dividing. I could go on to eighth notes, 16th note, 32nd note, 64th notes. It just keeps dividing. Don't worry about all that right now. Let's just get the whole note, half note, and the quarter note down. And I guess the dotted quarter note because they gave you one. And for now, just keep in mind that a dotted half note is the same as three quarter notes. Just memorize that. It doesn't matter what the time signature is, it's always that way. Now on page seven, they're telling you a little bit about how to sit at the piano. Well, we have to be careful about this. The idea is you want to be comfortable, but you want good posture. You don't sloop your back. Keep your back fairly straight. Not super straight like, ooh, attention. Just comfortably straight. Feet on the floor if you can reach the floor, I hope. And the the Forearm, this part of the arm needs to be even with the ground. You don't want it up here, you don't want it down here, just pretty close, even with the ground. So you may have to raise or lower your stool or whatever to make it do that. 
When you put the hands on the keys, and this is where some method books get off, is you want to be fairly relaxed in a natural position. That just kind of relaxed in a natural position. Don't switch the wrists this way or this way or whatever. Just stay relaxed that in a natural position. See, some method books will show pictures of the hands on the keyboard or something like this, and they'll have it, the hands like this. They want them even, straight into the keyboard. Please don't. No, just it's going to be at an angle, and it depends on where you are. The angle could change here, wherever you are. The angle could change, but the wrists are going to be, for the most part, just straight, relaxed and straight. The fingers, the idea is, I like to say, you don't curl your fingers. You relax your hand and let your fingers curl on their own. That's what you're after. Just to relax, however your natural curl of the fingers is, when you're relaxed, that's what you want on the keyboard. Now, there's some times where you'll have to stretch out and curl in, but for the most part, it's just relaxed. A natural curl on the fingers. You don't grab a ball or any of that stuff. Just relax. Now the fingers are numbered. <sighs> Assuming you have five fingers in each hand. The thumbs are one, one, two, three, four, five. So the little fingers are five, the thumbs are one. The idea is sometimes in music they have to tell you which, to use which finger to play which note, and they'll use numbers for that. Now that brings us to page eight. So let's talk about this. What are we doing? They have the notes that we're going to use here at the top, the names of them in the staff. And I, there are videos on YouTube that will help you learn to read the music. I don't cover the same. I'm not going to repeat what somebody else has been doing. You want to go find those videos on how to read music, look it up and see if there's anything that will help you, you go right ahead. To me, when I was a kid, all I had was there's the music and you memorize those notes. You already had middle C. It's on a line right below treble clef. That's it. It doesn't have to be physically right in the middle of the staves. It, it can be close to either staff, but it's on a line in treble clef right below the middle, or right below the staff. So that first note at the top there is middle C. And then it goes up the alphabet, C, D, E, F, G. And it goes up the staff with a space line, space line, you know, it alternates. So I leave it to you to memorize those notes, those five notes in treble clef. Now I use a drill known as a play it and say it drill. That's what I call it. Where you play the note and say the name of it. You don't worry about rhythm or anything. You just play the note and say the name of it. Look at starting point here. On number one, you see the little numbers above the staff, the little bitty bitty numbers? Those are finger numbers. So they're telling you that they want you to use finger one to play middle C. Now, I need to know what a C is on the keyboard. Where is C on the keyboard? And again, I need it, I leave it to you to memorize these, but just focus on these five keys for now. Just learn these five keys. C is at the bottom of a group of two black keys. So if I take a group of two black keys here, and I go to the bottom here, that is a C. Now there's a lot of C's on the piano. Whatever, I missed the last one. Okay. The music tells us which C we want. And the first one here in this music on the starting points in line one, that is middle C. And middle C is the C that's basically in front of you when you're sitting in the middle of the keyboard. So um, it's right here, um, here, so it's going to be this one. It's a group of two right here. So that's middle C. D is in the middle of a group of two. E is above a group of two. F is at the bottom of a group of three. And G is in the lower middle. See, in th when you have a group of three, you have two middles. We have a lower middle and an upper middle, so G is the lower middle. So the black keys are telling us what the white keys are. And I'll leave it to you to memorize these. And there, uh, there's a bunch of these on the keyboard. I mean, these notes are all over the place. This is the same thing. If this is an E, that's an E. That's an E. 
if that's G, this is G, 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 they're all over, wherever. The music tells us which one we're using, and this is right here at middle C, there, so it's these. So I leave it to you to memorize these keys, these five keys on the piano, and those five notes in the music. Now I use what's known as a play it and say it drill at first. That's where you forget the rhythm, you play the note and you say the name of it, because you need to associate the note in the music with the key on the piano and the sound. Listen to it. So if I put my thumb here and the other fingers here, and if I just play those notes and I say the name of it, C, D, E, F, G, F, E, D, C, and I just drill myself over and over and over until they become automatic. And I, I just know after a while that bottom line on a treble clef, that's an E. I just know it's an E. And it's this E. It's the E right above middle C. It's not some other E. But those are other notes. The bottom line on treble clef is this E. That's what we're going to do here. So there's a, a lot of challenging part here to get started, but again, we're going to go over this and over this as we go through. Now, I have a certain process I use when I start to learn a new piece of music. It's like you got a piece of music here, okay, how do I go about tackling this? Well, I, there's a process, I call it my process, it's not really mine, it doesn't belong to anybody. It's just a process that I've gotten used to using over the years. You'll have your own process, your teacher will have their own process, everybody has their own process, but for the videos, I'm going to use the process that I use. And that is, I kind of build it one thing at a time. Because I can't focus on a lot of stuff at once. So I just build it one thing at a time. So when I get a new piece of music like this, let's look at the first line and starting points here. Line one. And a line, by the way, is two step this is the whole grand staff. It's got a staff, two staffs that are connected. That's one line. Okay, so a lot, that's a line. The reason is because when they're connected with the vertical bars, you have to read the notes in both staffs at the same time. That, uh, have a wine or coffee or something. It's all right. We'll get there. Don't worry about it. Right now, the only notes are the ones in the top staff. We don't have to worry about the bottom staff right now. So the first thing I do is I kind of look a piece over. I want to know a general idea of how long it is because it could be pages long, whatever. This has to be one line long. Okay. I check the clef signs because they don't always have to be treble and clef. Now they are going to be for us for a very long time, but they don't have to be, so just get into the habit of checking the clef signs. Treble and bass clef. Then take a look at the time signature because it tells us how to count it. I'll teach you to count in a minute. It's 4 4 time. Then if I it's tricky rhythm and I'm having problems, then I forget the rhythm and I just play the notes. So I want thumb on here, if I put thumb we're in C position. This is called C position because it's no, fingers on a key and the bottom note in that position is a C, so it's a C position. Well I have a lot of C positions, here, 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 and here, and here, whatever. There's a lot of C positions on the piano, but there's only one C position that has middle C at the bottom, and that's this one. And that's where we are. Then I'm just going to play the notes first. I just want to know if I, I can do these notes okay, and how fast I go is not important. You go as slow as you got to. If you hesitate, that's fine. It doesn't matter. But once I have an idea of that, then I'll put in the counting. Now, okay, let's talk counting and rhythm. They have the counting for you in the middle of the steps. Music generally doesn't do that. You don't get the counting. You're supposed to know how to do it. Remember the time signature, the top number tells us how far to count. We're going to count to four. That's why it's one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. The bottom number tells us what we're counting. And in this case, it's a quarter note. So there is the same as four quarter notes in every measure. And you see the first three measures, they're all quarter notes. And there's four of them in every measure. If you look at the last one, there's two half notes. Remember, a half note is the same as two quarter notes. So two half notes, that's four, that's four counts. It just means you hold a half note down twice as long as a quarter note. You have to hold it down for two counts instead of one. 
so I can count it out. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. See, I hold the half notes down twice as long. But the counting is steady. And if I have hesitations anywhere, then I go back over those spots and I work on those and get rid of the hesitations. So it's a steady beat from beginning to end. That's important. On top of everything else, you need to develop a feel, a physical feel for the keyboard. Just a feel of where your fingers are and what's going on. So I challenge you to get to where you can play this without looking at the keyboard. Keep your eyes on the music. You need to know where your fingers are. So you need to remember which note or which key a finger is on. So when you get to that note in the music, you just know which finger to use. You don't have to look. Some people, at the beginning, they would do this. They would look at the first note, and then look down the keyboard and play it. Then they'd look at the second note, and then look down the keyboard and play it. Look at the third note, and then look down the keyboard and play it. And that's what I don't want you to do. I, I want you to keep your eye on the music and just trust that you're on the right keys. You may have to look down at first, but you want to get to where you don't. And for this piece, that's about it. That, that takes care of it because it's one line long. Now, don't copy me, please. That's, I hesitate playing these for, for you because I don't want you to think, well, play it for me and let me hear it first. No. I want you to read the music and play it yourself and, and discover it on your own and then check it with me. That's what prefer you do it. Now, there's a section in most all my videos, most of them, called a play with me section. It's at the end. I have the starting point of that in, every, in the description of every video where it is. So you can go right to it when you need it. Where I need you to play along with me at the same time. And I go real slow. But you need to learn it first so you know you have it. And you can play it with no hesitations or anything. Because or, I don't hesitate. You've got to keep going. How we play it together. Are you playing the same note I'm playing when, you, when I play it? Because... If you don't have a teacher and you play a wrong note, how do you know you played a wrong note? Well, you don't. Or if your counting is off, how do you know? You don't. So a teacher would tell you that real quick if you got something wrong. So here, I'm assuming you don't have a teacher. I hope you do. You really need a live teacher. But if you don't, play it with me and check to make sure your notes and rhythm are correct. We're not performing it. We're going real slow just to check that. Now the second line here is the, almost the same as the first, except you'll notice the numbers are 3, 4, not 4, 4. That means we're only counting the 3, or they're the same as 3 quarter notes in every measure. Now if you look across, you see the first two measures, there's 3 quarter notes in them, and the third measure is a half note, that's the same as 2, plus a quarter note, that's 3, and then a dotted half note, remember I told you just memorize that a dotted half note is the same as 3 quarter notes. Just memorize it. Well, then in three or four times, it gets three counts. It's the whole measure. It tells you how long to hold them down. So it's like that. Same position as before, and do the plant and sand drill again. C, D, E, D, E, F, G, F, E. Just play it and say it over and over and over at your speed, not mine. And then we try the rhythm. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two. Three, one, two, three. See that? Mm -hmm. Now, this book, like a lot of method books, are, in my opinion, a little too helpful. You see, in the first line, they give you the first five fingers. And then in the third measure, they give you more finger numbers. You can cross those out. Please don't be reading the finger numbers. That's a, that's a mistake. Some teachers encourage that. Oh, just read the finger numbers. Read the finger numbers. That's how I did it when I first started, because it was easy. It's easier to read the numbers than it is the notes. The problem is, then when the hands started moving around and spreading out, then suddenly the fingers were on different notes, and I didn't know the notes, so I was lost. I had to go back and learn the notes. I'm asking you, just learn the notes straight off 
right off the bat. The only finger number you need in these lines, either of these lines is the first one. That one, because if you put your thumb on middle C, then your other fingers just go on these other keys. And that's the only finger number you need. Please don't read finger numbers, read the notes. Now in the second line, so you look, go through the process. You look it over, treble and bass clef, three, four time signature, you can play and say the notes, we're okay on there. You get the rhythm, you got that. You should be good to go. No hesitations, no? So the second line is... Yeah, something like that. You don't have to go that fast. You play it, you see what you think of it. Now, let's play them together, both lines, just to check your notes and rhythms. I'm going to do the first line. I'm, I'm going to give us four counts because it's a 4-4 four, four time. I, the number of counts I give is based on the time signature. I'm going to go one, two, ready, go. That's four counts. And we're going to do the first line. Then we're going to stop. Then I'm going to give us three counts for the second line because there's only three counts in a major. I'm going to one, ready, go. And then we do the second line together. Just to check your notes and rhythms. One, Two, ready, go. One, two, three, four, off. Second line. One, ready, go. Two, one, two, three. 